By trying to stay too lean, you could be holding both your health and your progress back. Here's why. Welcome back, folks. Soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf here with Wolf Coaching. Today, we're talking about why staying too lean could be holding you back. Specifically, we'll be talking about energy availability and relative energy deficiency. If you've ever competed in bodybuilding or you've known anyone who has competed in a physique sport, you'll realize that towards the end of a long cut or a long prep, they usually feel pretty miserable. Why is this? Well, there are a few reasons. One could be that by simply staying at too low of a body fat percentage, their body is essentially fighting them a little bit. One component of why staying too lean can harm both your progress and your health is called energy availability. Now, energy availability is defined as total energy intake minus energy expended during exercise divided by your lean body mass. As the name implies, this is essentially just a measure of how much energy your diet provides you with once you've accounted for exercise. So for example, when you've been cutting for quite a long time and your calories have to drop quite low because your body is essentially fighting you on trying to lose more weight, your energy availability might drop to be quite low. Why is this an issue? Well, once you drop below about 30 calories per kilogram of body mass, and that's kilocalories by the way, for you nerds out there, things start to happen that aren't very good. In fact, you go into something called low energy availability, and that typically results in something called relative energy deficiency, or RED for short. So when you drop below 30 kilocalories per kilogram of lean body mass, things start to go wrong. What exactly happens? Well, relative energy deficiency in sports describes the symptoms associated with this state. As far as performance goes, Depression, irritability, worsened performance, worsened concentration, all of those things happen when you're not feeding yourself sufficient amount of calories to be in good health. Relative energy deficiency can impact a wide variety of systems, from your immune system to your bone health to your menstrual cycle, a lot of bad things happen. Now, dear viewer, you might be asking, when will this actually happen? When would I happen to dip into relative energy deficiency? Well, in short, when you're dieting down to quite a low body fat percentage, and even when you're maintaining at quite a low body fat percentage, you can actually get into relative energy deficiency. What happens essentially as you diet down is that a variety of metabolic adaptations occur, which result in your maintenance calories becoming quite low. And in fact, at that point, in order to keep losing weight, you'll drop your calories into this relative energy deficiency territory. Now you might think that once you're done cutting, once you've achieved your target body fat percentage and look, you can just increase your calories again and go to maintenance and those metabolic adaptations will be fine and you can dip out of relative energy deficiency again. But it turns out that just because you go to maintenance after a long cut may not be sufficient to completely alleviate those metabolic adaptations and even that maintenance calories at that point, you might still be in relative energy deficiency and experience those symptoms. And this can happen to some people, right? Like I'm not sure if you've seen Tristan Lee, for example. Tristan Lee has described symptoms similar to relative energy deficiency from staying at a super low body fat year round. So if you're not eating enough calories, you get into something called relative energy deficiency, and that's bad news. What else happens when you get too lean? Well, your body might just try to make you regain that weight. And one way it does this is via a hormone called leptin. Leptin is a hormone involved in managing hunger that is primarily secreted by adipose tissue and is secreted in proportion to how much fat you have around. So the more body fat you carry, the more leptin you'll produce, and leptin blunts hunger, makes you less hungry. Don't believe me? Recent research has actually shown a correlation of 0.85 between body fat percentage and serum leptin concentrations. When you get quite lean, you don't have as much body fat around anymore, and that will reduce the amount of leptin in your system, making you substantially hungrier. And indeed, leptin seems to play a key role in regaining weight or making you want to regain weight and making you hungrier after a long diet where you've lost a bunch of body fat. Other hormones like ghrelin and PYY might also be involved in this hunger regulation. So when you're too lean, not only do you get potentially some of the side effects of relative energy deficiency, but you also get quite hungry because you don't have as much body fat around, which increases leptin, which keeps you from being hungry. Now let's talk about one of the more up-to-date models on this that encompasses environmental factors, genetic factors, and physiological factors. That model is the dual intervention point model. The dual intervention point model essentially states that for your body fat, your body has two intervention points. So it either intervenes when your body fat is getting too low or when it is getting too high. When your body fat percentage is somewhere between these two intervention points, 
Your body fat is mostly regulated by environmental factors. When your body fat dips below the lower intervention point, for example, your body will try and get your body fat higher again by secreting less leptin. This in turn will lead to you feeling quite hungry in addition to feeling potentially some of the symptoms of relative energy deficiency. Being aware of what your lower point might be for your body is pretty important. For example, if below 10% body fat for you as a man, you find that you consistently feel substantially hungrier and you start experiencing some of the symptoms of relative energy deficiency, that's a good sign that might be around your lower intervention point. Importantly, with regards to both this dual point intervention model and the relative energy deficiency, there is a lot of variance in how people experience this and when people experience this. There are three ways in which people differ here. Number one, what energy availability starts causing relative energy deficiency issues? Number two, what the boundaries of the dual intervention point model actually are. For some people, they might be higher. For some people, they might be lower. And finally, number three, to what extent an individual experiences metabolic adaptations that prevent them from losing weight as easily during weight loss and during subsequent maintenance. To wrap it up, if you're currently experiencing symptoms of relative energy deficiency and you're not losing weight for a show or for a photo shoot or for any very compelling reason, it might just behoove you to regain weight slowly in order to get you out of that relative energy deficiency. Getting out of relative energy deficiency would benefit your health and it would likely benefit your progress in the gym as well in terms of muscle growth and strength development, for example. Here are some takeaways. Staying lower than about 8 to 12% body fat for most men or lower than about 18 to 22% body fat for most women would likely put you at increased risk for relative energy deficiency and a wide variety of negative symptoms. Ultimately, keep in mind there is variance. We all know that one shredded guy that doesn't have any issues whatsoever. However, if you're experiencing symptoms of relative energy deficiency and you're chronically hungry, consider slowly regaining weight to get you out of that state of low energy availability. Anyways, that's the video. If you liked the video, please comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys, my viewers, in that next video. Peace. It is hot as fuck in here, Jesus Christ. I think it's a combination of, you know, we grinding, the spotlight being on, both proverbial and literal. No cat check for fuck's sake. Do your job. She's a paid actor.